constituting of a three-judge bench today has rendered its decision on the complaint by sitting governors being arrested, whether on trumped-up or real charges, uh, and being given a bail term to tell them, stay away from your office. We bar you from accessing your office during the tenure of the anti-corruption criminal charges, however long that lasts. And the court said, we can deal with that issue because that issue was dealt with by the Supreme Court in the uh, Honorable Ferdinand Waititu Babayao case. After he had complained uh, to the uh, High Court, he had filed a review and it went on to the Court of Appeal and the Court of Appeal said, that's okay, you can stay away from your office. In spite of the law saying in section 62, subsection 6 of the anti uh, of economic crimes and anti-corruption uh, law that uh, the staying away, being barred from office does not apply to uh, constitutional office holders, governors, which is why today you have an allegation against a judge of a criminal nature and this judge still goes on hearing cases on a daily basis because that section applies to them. But mysteriously, and with respect to the judges of the Constitutional Court, they say, we will not deal with that. We cannot even go and open that issue because the Supreme Court has said that that's okay. Now, what is even more shocking is that when Honorable uh, Sonko was arrested, he said that, did you need to apply this unnecessary force against me? Did you need to have 100 police officers come and arrest me? Uh, did you find me armed? I was not armed. Did I pose any threats to your person or the safety of any police officer arresting me? And he had said, the manner of my arrest, when I was heading to Hawaii on the material date, that is the 6th of uh, December 2019, was unconstitutional. And you cannot use excessive force when arresting someone because this is against even the Police uh, Force Act. So the High Court mysteriously says, we will not deal with that issue. Go to a different court, whichever court that is, but not this court. And you're wondering, doesn't the Constitution say, doesn't the Constitution expressly say that if you have a claim of an existing violation of your rights or a subsisting uh, threat, which you can actually crystallize and say that this is imminent on me, you go to the High Court? Why abdicate the role? Is it because that this decision that you know you are supposed to declare that Section 62, Subsection 6 of the Anti-Corruption and Economic Crimes Act covers sitting governors is going to sound unpopular or not politically correct? I don't know. But when we have come to a stage where Courts shy away and they keep away from deciding on the merits of a case. Then we are headed to a weekend in a very unhelpful judiciary that cannot come to the aid and assistance of someone whose rights are genuinely violated in threat of violation and they have invoked the proper law. In sum, the court has said. Okay, you place the evidence that you're supposed to place before us, but we probably need to hear you. And he plays all the evidence by way of an affidavit. One more evidence. What, what other hearing is supposed to be that? So this abdication of the responsibility of the judiciary to dispense with justice, to say and render a decision based on the law is very worrying. It's worrisome. It's worrisome because we're even headed to a more volatile politi political scenario. And if the judiciary sharks and abdicates that constitutional responsibility, then in my humble view, and a tremendous respect, it has no business being the judiciary. It has no business being funded by the taxpayer. Even you take, for instance, today, the courthouses are closed to the public. You cannot access all in the name of COVID-19, whatever that is.
every politician in the out there can do their job and they can go and dispense with their political ambitions as they choose and elect. But if you have an issue of the violation of your right and you want to be heard in defense of your right in law or under the constitution, the courthouse is close to you. And they tell you that you have to go online. You have to access the, this, this through a, a, a platform that is managed, that is actually operated by another entity. Meaning, therefore, that you are barred from accessing justice. Have we redefined our concept of justice? Have we redefined our concept of the rule of law? If so, then we had better get rid of our constitution. Let's get rid of our laws as they are. We are being nothing but hypocritical. When it sounds so nice, convenient, and okay, we can then say that this law applies. But when the law is in black and white, like section 62, subsection 6 of the Anti-Corruption and Economic Crimes Act, the courts are shying away from applying it because it's not politically correct. And if we are serving a political regime through the instrumentality of the law, and I'm not saying this, trying to point any accusatory fingers at the judges who have rendered their decision, I'm just expressing an opinion, then you will find that you will never render something called justice. Justice must be pure, distilled in these corridors. But in a courthouse that is objective, that has fairness guiding it as a principle, we must become blind to these political machinations behind the scenes. Are we saying, therefore, that the law does not apply as it is written? We cannot import a perception of the law that we want to apply merely because it suits the circumstances. In a nutshell, this court has said, you have given us all the evidence, we have seen all your evidence, but take your case elsewhere. Where else? Where else? Isn't that in itself an act of injustice? 